It's a haunting sound. Shackles jingling from the bowels of death row as its newest inmate, Jesse Dodson, is escorted by prison guards to meet us, just feet from where he's scheduled to die. I'm doing fine, you know, just doing time. We're Dotson's only visitor since he arrived on death row at the Riverbend Maximum Security Prison in Nashville this March. The only family member he's talked with is his mother, who he calls from death row. You know it's kind of hard, but I forgive him. It's the idea to mama. At his murder trial, Dotson's mother took the stand, telling jurors he confessed to her after he confessed to police. He told her an argument with his brother led to the massacre. I did confess, but before I confessed, I also told her that they was trying to make me say that I done it. Has she said she forgives you, or has she... Forgive me for what? Have you guys had that any conversation about it? What, what is she forgiving me for? You know, you have to be done something to be forgiven, right? Some why the children, why the baby? No, I asked some kids, and he said they saw me. After two weeks of heartbreaking testimony and gruesome crime scene photos, it took a jury just 90 minutes to find Dotson guilty. Did you kill your brother? No, ma'am. Did you kill any of the people in that house? No, ma'am. I think it's very pretty fair to say that I'll never forget this as long as I live. Broken and bloodied boards believed to have been used to beat the children, one as young as two months old, were found in the home. It was a crime scene so heinous it brought even the most seasoned emergency workers to their knees. I smelled the dead bodies. He turned his head, and the next thing we saw was most one of the most horrible things I've ever seen. It was a knife stuck embedded in his skull. You said you confessed to your mother. Yes, ma'am. How do you confess for something that you didn't do? I keep telling you. How many times do I have to tell you? I was threatened. Do I have to keep saying I was threatened? He said, I got something for you. I'm going to throw your ass on that full flow, and I'm going to let them kill your ass. So, yes, I confess. Dotson says he stands by his courtroom testimony that police strong-armed him into confessing. He claims he was hiding under the bed in the home during the murders, but he wouldn't go back through the details of that night, saying his case is on appeals. It was horrifying, but at the same token, what do you want me to do? There was nothing for me to do. You could have called police. Could have. I did why? Because there's something personal with me, you know, and there's something that I got to live with. Investigators believe the bodies could have sat in the home for 40 hours before they were discovered. Fox 13 has video showing Dawson at the crime scene the night police were eventually called. What were you thinking then? You were on the scene the night that police showed up here. Well, I already knew what happened. You know, I knew my brother then was dead. So, it was, you know, what you mean, what I thought, I already knew. And so you're telling me that you knew there were kids in that house that were dead and dying, and you chose not to call police? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And ladies and gentlemen, what's very interesting is there's a cordless phone right here. Why didn't he grab it? Because he doesn't call the police? We're not asking you to call the police. Call an ambulance. How about that? You know, a lot of people feel that you're a monster. Well, that's, that's their opinion. You know, people have their opinions. You can't stop people from having their opinions. You know, I think people are monsters too. You know, so hey, it's vice versa. I know I'm not a monster. I don't even know how you would go about holding a two-month-old to stab it and to beat it. Three children, also beaten and stabbed, survived the massacre. At trial, one of them, Dawson's nine-year-old nephew, identified him as the killer. I said, I love him, he said, no, you don't. Grandmother Ida Anderson testified at trial, saying the surviving children have questions. My grandchildren want to know why it happened. Ida Anderson says they want to know what happened, 
they want Uncle Jesse to tell them why he killed their parents. They loved him. I love them too. I still love them. But I didn't kill their parents. You know. Who did? I don't know. You don't think when CJ was fighting for his life, look at that bathroom, and he didn't hear anything? The jury took 90 minutes to convict you. Mm -hmm. The judge believes you did this. Your family believes you did this. Are there others besides you that don't believe that you did this? I don't, I don't know. You know, they have their opinions, you know. Just because the judge and my family believe something, that don't make it true. Did Jesse ever tell you that something had happened to Cecil and the people inside of Leicester Street? No, sir. But Dotson says his father's testimony hurt him the most when he told jurors the two brothers didn't always get along. He got up there and I'm like, where did he get this from? He got up there... I guess they told him what to say. My thing is, if I'm so guilty, why is everybody lying? The judge says you should never be able to walk the streets again, and your sister calls you the devil. Do you think you're an evil person? No, ma'am. I know I'm not an evil person. This is suggestive of uh, like a serrated knife blade. During his trial, Dotson seemed laid back, even smiling at times. In the end, the jury didn't buy Dotson's story that he was hiding during the massacre, nor did they believe police threatened him to confess. Dotson had no reaction as the judge read the guilty verdict. We have found you guilty of murder in the first degree of Cecil Dotson, Marissa Williams, Hollis Seals, Shindry Roberson, Cecil Dotson Jr. II, and Samario Dotson. What are I supposed to get upset, you know? I supposed to be mad and throw a temper tantrum or, you know, they said guilty. Okay, it's not over. After the verdict, Dotson changed into prison clothes before facing a jury for sentencing. First, I wasn't coming back out. You know, I wasn't going to come back out. Why? They done already said guilty, so what else is there to do? We, the jury, unanimously find that the punishment for the defendant, Jesse Dotson, shall be death. So when the judge read the sentence of six death penalties, what went through your head then? It's not over. You know, if this, okay, it's, it's, it's six death penalties, 120 years, it's not over. The lethal injection date has been set for March 2nd, 2012. That'll be the four-year anniversary of the murders. That's, that's just a date. So you have hope that you'll get out someday? I know I will. Dotson claims he didn't get a fair trial. He believes the entire videotape of his confession, filmed by the First 48 TV show, still exists and will free him someday. And he thinks the surviving child victims may eventually remember that day differently. I'm glad they're here. And you never know. They might be the ones that free me. In the meantime, Dawson says he spends most of his time in prison reading the Bible, chicken noodle soup books, and studying his case. But I, I don't feel like I'm going to die right here. You know, like I said, I got God in my cone. Do you believe in heaven and hell? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Where do you think he'll go? When yeah. he don't you think you're going to have I maintain my innocence. I'm going to always maintain my innocence.